So during the week of March 18th, the far-left CNN almost lost 30% of an audience that is already minuscule. In the arenas of credibility and viewership, CNN is a dying brand. Over the last week, the news has been especially bad for the far-left outlet. On the credibility front, CNN chief Jeff Zucker tried to excuse his network's two-year deliberate deception about Trump colluding with the Russians by admitting on Tuesday that no one at CNN does investigative work like we didn't already know that quote we are not investigators he told the far left new york times we are journalists and our role is to report the facts as we know them which is exactly what we did for years cnn had fooled itself into believing journalism is the act of sitting around in a skinky studio or skinky corner office or even skinky a restaurant with sources groomed to tell them what they want to hear and now in this post Mueller report world, CNN has managed to become an even bigger laughing stock than it was last week. And when you look at the ratings, things were already pretty dire for CNN last week. For the week of March 18th, meaning prior to the release of the Mueller report, exonerating Trump from the Russian collusion hoax, CNN had lost a jaw-dropping 24% of its total day viewers and 27% of its primetime viewers. When compared to this week last year, in the 25 to 55 age demo, which sets advertiser rates, CNN had lost an astonishing 30 37% of total day viewers and 38% of primetime viewers. For comparison purposes, during this same week, Fox News increased its total day and primetime viewership by plus 8 and plus 2, respectively. MSNBC and CNN's competitive for left-wing viewers only lost 9% of its total day viewers and 15% of its primetime viewers. In the 25 to 54 demo, MSNBC also took a huge loss in total day and primetime viewers, 33% and 32% respectively. And here are some of the numbers of March 18th, or the week of March 18th. Fox News had 1.3 million, MSNBC had 1 million, and CNN a laughable 622,000. And that was for total day viewers. In primetime viewership, Fox News had 2.4 million, MSNBC had 1.7 million, and again, CNN Laughable had 889,000 viewers. So how is CNN doing in the post-Mueller world? Well, there was not yet a whole lot of data available, just a couple of days worth. But the early returns being the word catastrophic to mind, when the Mueller report broke on Friday night, CNN's primetime coverage could not even even break a million viewers. Fox News again had finished number one when it came to extended special coverage from 5 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, with 2.5 million in total viewers. On Monday during prime time, four of CNN's hours failed to break 700,000 total viewers. Jake Tapper, Wolf Blitzer, and Aaron Burnett all had failed. MSNBC might see a ratings dip as it maneuvers in the post-Mueller world, but CNN was already in trouble already in far left last place and those wondering how CNN's ratings could possibly get any worse are about to find out now let's go ahead and pick this apart point by point you see something that was hilariously pointed out to me was that CNN's chief had came out and said that those at CNN are not investigative journalists or investigative type or more accurately he said that no one at CNN does investigative work period which again does not surprise anybody but but here is the big thing here. CNN prides itself on being a news outlet. And if you're going to do news, you might as well do some, you know, a little bit of investigative work, not just post anything that anybody gives you. And this is what CNN had been doing for a long time. You see, CNN had manipulated and took advantage of a stance within the First Amendment that allows the reporters to keep their sources confidential. Even though there was no federally recognized privilege that allows reporters to keep their sources confidential, but the Supreme Court has found that news gathering is not without First Amendment protections. Whether or not a reporter promised confidentiality, rather or not a reporter had promised confidentiality. So CNN and other news outlets like CNN, you know you got the Washington 
Post, the New York Times, MSNBC, and so forth, many of these far-left outlets had used this privilege to make coverages and news articles and so forth about, you know, misleading information because of a source told them so. You know, CNN had done this many, many times before when they said, oh, we have a source close to the right House that tells us that President Trump does this, that, and the other. And one of the most recognizable cases is that they said that they had a source close to the White House that told them that Trump had beaten Melania Trump while in the White House. And it was just crazy crap like that. And President Trump couldn't, you know, get there for misleading information or defamation or anything like that because their their source is confidential. And in the court of law, they are not eligible to release that source or name that source. And anybody who who is participating in you know the media like myself and others who create blogs and YouTube videos talking about the news and so forth are protected under the First Amendment and protected under the journalistic you know whatever so basically I could come out tomorrow and make a video about a source close to CNN had told me that everybody who works at CNN walks around half naked for half the day and CNN couldn't sue me for defamation because you know it was a source that told me that and by law I am not, um, prohibited to release my source or name my source. And this is what CNN had done for the last, you know, since President Trump had gone into the office. But they did this continuously to where so many people are distrusting of them. That the only saving grace for the alternative media is that people in large, or the public at large, does not trust the mainstream media, does not trust CNN. And we see this with the number of people who are either cutting off their cable bills or not watching CNN period. They're getting their news online from places like me and other YouTubers or blogs or websites that report on the news. Because the older generations are starting to figure out that, you know, these news outlets are just not credible. And millennials and Gen Z, well, forget it. Because they're not watching these news networks, period. And that is a good thing. CNN, MSNBC, and even Fox News is not a credible source of information. Just because Fox News is, you know, supposedly right-leaning, it doesn't mean that they're not, you know, in leagues with other people in the MSN. I mean, again, look at what they did to Judge Janine Pirro after she went after Elon Omar. Look what they did to her. So Fox News is the same as CNN. It's just its coverage is different and they so happen to, you know, somewhat kind of favor President Trump. And you sort of congratulate them on getting, you know, the majority and the top rated news network in the country because that pool of people watching cable is shrinking. Just because Fox News brings in the the most viewers that doesn't mean their viewership is also declining because people in general are just cutting off the cable because entertainment is so much easier to get I mean you have YouTube you have Netflix you can pirate movies I, of course, don't recommend you do that. You, you could always rent them, but people do it anyway. And there is nothing that is stopping them from doing this. I mean, look at CNN's pathetic attempt to throw money at YouTube to help them, you know, rank in the search ranking so they get more views and stuff like that. Because back when YouTube first started, all the years afterward, these CNN places, Fox News places, people in the MSN didn't take YouTubers seriously because they were still kind of, you know, very, very alternative. But now CNN, MSNBC, they are going out of their way to defame YouTubers, especially political ones, and not even political ones. Just, just look at what they try to do to PewDiePie. So obviously, you know, the MSN is terrified of YouTubers who talk about political analysis and YouTubers in general because that there are so many of them that they can simply not buy every single one of them off. And even to a greater extent, they really can't buy off the political YouTubers because in order to do that, they would have to, you know, cost up money and then the second one it was is they have to swallow their own pride because CNN and MSNBC still believe that they are the number one places of news and journalistic integrity and crap like that when in fact they are not they are simply propaganda tools used by the far left there are real investigative journalists out there and no one at CNN is doing that e even like what is he the CEO of uh, CNN I think even he comes out and says that nobody at CNN doesn't does investigative work. 
because they don't. If you want real investigative journalists, you know, you have Laura Loomer, you have Alex Jones, you have Owen Schroyer, you have all these other people on the right and on the left who are actually doing investigative journalists. Now, the you know, the people on the right do it more than the people on the left, but that's just how it is now. And within five to even 10 years, CNN won't be around anymore. CNN is losing viewers, it is losing money, day in and day out. It is honestly just a matter of time before the advertisers leave CNN because advertisers are only there because of the eyeballs that watch CNN. And if CNN cannot even get, you know, 600,000 people to watch them in their prime time hours, then why would businesses advertise in front of CNN when they're, they're losing? They're losing audience, they're losing people, you're better off just advertising on YouTube because what, YouTube gets, uh, what, 13 billion views a day? There is no question that YouTube is a superior place to advertise. But either way, you guys go ahead and let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys.